Hi, welcome back to the Cozy Sound channel. I recently found a little bit of time to revisit my simple clock divider. If you've been following the previous videos on the clock divider, you'll know that this is based on a, a 4017 decade counter and has a kind of a, a rotary switch that simply changes the reset point, which changes the number of counts before you get the next output. You'll also be aware that I've been playing around with um, incorporating an AND gate into the circuit because this helps match both a bit of the timing and also the shape of the trigger pulse to the output pulse. Um, one of the things with the 4017 is that it'll hold a, it, its pulse open until the next count. So it's more of a gate than, so if you hit it with a trigger, input is a trigger, the output is a gate. Let's go and have a look at the theory. I'll remind you what an AND gate is. I'll show you what the theory is behind matching the input and the output with an AND gate. Then what we'll do, we'll go and have a look at the actual uh, panel and I'll demonstrate what difference having the AND gate switched in or switched out will make to the way the signal affects for instance, in this demonstration, I'm going to use uh, one of the drum modules. It'll be probably the hi hat that I'm going to use, um, but it's a good it's a good module to demonstrate the difference that incorporating an AND gate can make to uh, your clock signals. First, the theory. This is a simple illustration of a potential issue that can arise if you just use a forty seventeen decade counter on its own as your clock divider. Trigger pulse, narrow trigger pulse coming in and as the counter moves round you actually get a, a stretched gate pulse type output. This may not be what you want, you may want to match your output to your input and the way we do that matching generally is to use an AND gate. So let's remind ourselves of what an AND gate is and how it works. This is the symbol for a basic two input AND gate. You have input A and input B and an output. Working with logic naught and logic one, for the AND function to be true, both input A and input B need to be at logic one for the output to be at logic 1. Any other logic state on the inputs will produce a logic naught at the output. So we can write a truth table that describes this. So that's what we have here. And you can see that the only output at 1 is when A and B are also at 1. So that's your AND gate. If we now translate that into something that applies to the synth, so we have a pulse coming in, so the signal will either be low or high, we replace logic naught with low and logic one with high, and then rewrite the truth table, and as you'd expect, it's exactly the same. The output will only be high when both the input A and input B are high. As soon as either of those inputs or both of those inputs goes low, then the output will go low. So what we're saying is that if we have a, a narrow pulse, even if one of the on the input A, even if input B has a wider pulse, the output will still go low as soon as input A goes low. To incorporate this in our circuit design, uh, I have here a 4081 IC, which is a quad two input AND gate. So there's four of those AND gates in the single chip. We really only need one of them. And the way that we get the truth table to convert into uh, actual signals on a synth is we take our trigger pulse we feed it into the 4017 as before, but this time we also feed it into one of the inputs on our AND gate. We then take the output from the 4017 
and feed that back into the second input of the AND gate. And then the clock pulse that we're interested in from our divider is the output from the AND gate. So you can see here, if we've got the short pulse on input A, even though we get the longer pulse, or wider pulse, on input B, as soon as A goes low, then the output of our AND gate will lo go low. So we now, the output is matching the input. If we look at this in terms of the actual clock divider function, if this is our trigger input to the clock divider, and we're dividing by two, so our, our output is on every second trigger. We feed the trigger input into one of the inputs on the AND gate. We feed the output, the clock divided output, onto the other input on the AND gate. And then we take the output from the AND gate. And as you can see, the output will only remain high whilst both input A and input B are high, as soon as A goes low, or they both go low, then the output stays low, or goes low and stays low. And then it's only when both are high again that it comes back up. So this is how we use the AND gate function to solve the pulse stretching issue with using the 4017 on its own. There's the theory. Um, if you want to know what the circuit diagram looks like, um, it's this. So you can see it very simple. We've we've got the 4017 chip as we had before in the very simple layout version, and then we've uh, got the output that is. On, on my version I've put a switch in so I can switch the AND gate in or out um, but we're simply using one of the AND gates on the 4081 and then the output from the AND gate um, is the synchronized output from whatever the trigger signal was that went in or clock signal and what's coming out of the 4017 so there's not a lot going on with the circuit a strip board layout for that particular circuit design um, could look a little bit like this. Um, so that's that's fairly straightforward. Um, so you could you could have a go at that design if you wanted to. It, it it should work. However, when I came to build my version. Um, two things, I'd already got the 4017 part of the board built and I didn't actually have at the time a 4081 chip um, but I think it's 4073 the difference is that is a 3 input AND gate so instead of just having A, B and then an output you've got A, B, C and an output of course, I only need two inputs, so what do I do? I short A and B together, so I've now got A plus B, C. So when they're shorted together, they both see the same signal at the same time, so it's, it just basically converts a three input AND gate to a two input AND gate, and it's only because that's the chip I had available. And I actually built it onto a piggyback board, so my back of my panel looks like this. So you can see there's the simple divider with the 4017 and, and all the wires to the switch on the bottom and then I've simply just stuck the AND gate chip on the top there and then wired it up through a switch. Okay. Right, let's have a look at the panel. This is the clock divider panel. A um, bit far away on this design but it's pretty much what you've seen in previous videos. Uh, and so I've, I can switch the AND gate in or out. Um, I've got a reset button which um, 
basically resets the counter on the 4017. And then I've got um, the rotary switch, which selects at which count the 4017 will reset. And then we've got an input and an output. Pretty simple, really. Let's demonstrate it. I'll talk you through the patch. In order to provide an input, I'm using a gate output on my baby eight sequencer. Uh, in actual fact, the gate output on my baby eight, it, it's derived from the 555 clock that's in there. So it's not a gate coming from the 4017 sequencer chip in there. It's a, it's a gate derived from the clock that's driving that chip. Just another way of doing it. But it's a gate signal. Uh, it, it puts out about in the arrangement I've got in there, it puts out about five volts. So in order to, because I'm going to start sharing that voltage around, in order to give it a little bit more uh, uh, grunt, a bit of a fighting chance to get around everything, I'm passing it through my buffered gate, which will probably boost it up to something around about eight, eight volts ish uh, when it comes out. So it's it's got it'll got a bit more power to shove it around the system. I'm taking that output and because I want to be sure that I'm getting uh, a sharp trigger pulse uh, in order to compare the difference between a, a sharp pulse input and the kind of gated, gated output that you would get from the 4017. I'm also taking the output from the, the buffered gate into my gate to trigger module. Um, there's a video on that the link that you can follow for that and then out of that I'm taking a trigger signal into my newly modified simple clock divider output from the clock divider is going to the trigger input on my hi-hat module the output from the hi-hat is going into the onboard mixer and then out to be recorded on the video the way it goes. Probably the more it sounds like. So this is the simple clock divider without the AND gate switched in. So this is just simply using the 4017 as a clock divider. It's getting a nice open hi hat. Almost a splash symbol there, but yeah. Right, let's switch in the AND gate, which should now match the output shape to the input shape. You can watch, if you can see this LED, you can hopefully see a difference in the duration of the LED. You can see these, these rapidly flashing LEDs, that's illustrating the trigger signal. So you can see we've got a rapid trigger signal going in, but there's a longer duration on the clock divider LED. Right, and gate switching in. Listen to the change in sound and watch the clock divider LED. You can only just make out that it's flashing on that on that video because it's it's only on for a very brief time. But what you should be able to hear now is that it's again that that kind of wide open cymbal splash or oh, very wide open hi-hat sound you're now getting much cleaner sharper hi-hat sound which is more true to the shape and duration of the trigger signal that's going in of course I can change that on the decay setting on the on the hi-hat but what essentially if I if I provide it with a, a longer um, gate signal from the purely from the 4017 it kind of adds uh, an accent to the drum sound, um, or it's kind of a it, it's more uh, uh, it, like turning up the the decay, so it's holding it for a longer time. So let's go back to the AND gate being plugged in. Of course, you can kind of start and add other things into this. Um, if we Come out of a trigger 
into the kick drum take the kick drum so now we've got the kick drum which is beating at the rate that the original trigger signal is and you can hear the hi-hat and that's beating at the rate set by the clock divider I've got a snare drum here as well and what I can do is I can take another trigger signal put that actually no we'll put that trigger signal into my other clock divider which doesn't have an AND gate on it this is just simply a 4017 clock divider put that into the trigger input for the snare drum and then hey modular drum machine very simple modification very easy to add the AND chip in there I've shown you the circuit diagram, I've shown you a possible strip board layout, so yeah, go on, have a go, build your own. <laughs>